Salesforce is a leading customer relationship management platform and the demand for Salesforce developers is on a rise. A Salesforce developer's day-to-day -day work is highly technical but the job goes beyond programming. An entry-level Salesforce developer can earn anywhere from 8 LPA to 15 LPA and grow exponentially based on the knowledge and skill set of a professional. As we all know, Salesforce has revolutionized the way businesses interact with their customers. In today's fast-paced and ever-evolving digital landscape, businesses are looking for individuals who possess the skill and knowledge necessary to help them leverage the powers of Salesforce to its potential. As a result, competition for Salesforce developer roles can be fierce and it's important to be well prepared before heading into an interview. So if you want to build a career in Salesforce domain and become a Salesforce expert, then it's time for you to launch your preparation journey. In this video, we have curated a list of interview questions mostly asked in Salesforce interview setups. Whether you are a recent graduate looking to break into the industry or seasoned professional looking to advance your career, these questions might come your way. So make sure to pay attention and stay tuned till the end of this video. But before we begin with the session, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that bell icon for regular updates from us. So let us begin by looking at Salesforce developer interview questions. First question, what are governor limits? Resource utilization limits enforced on Apex by Salesforce to prevent runaway processes from monopolizing resources are known as governor limits. This is vital as Salesforce is a multi-tenanted environment so run resources are shared. Examples of these are the number of SOQL queries, DML statements and the number of HTTP callout requests in a transaction. Second question, what programming languages can we use to customize a Salesforce instance? Apex is the server-side language used to customize Salesforce that has a syntax like Java. The major technology on the front end is Lightning Web Components which is followed by the more dated and specialized Aura components and Visual Force, all of which use HTML, CSS and JavaScript in conjunction with Apex. We can also use Flow, which is a low-code language, to customize both the front-end and the back-end. Third question, what Salesforce-supported development tools are there? The main Salesforce-supported development tool is the Salesforce extension for Visual Studio Code, which utilizes the Salesforce command line interface. The Visual Studio Code is a simplified code editor that supports development operations as debugging, task execution, and version control. It aims to provide only the tools required for a quick code build debug cycle, leaving more complex workflows to full featured IDEs like Visual Studio IDE. Fourth question What is SOQL? SOQL stands for Salesforce Object Query Language, and as the name suggests, it is the main language used for performing queries against the database. We use SOQL when you know which objects contain the data and want to retrieve data from a single object or from a collection of related objects. Count the number of records that meet the criteria you've set. The SOQL query syntax consists of a mandatory SELECT statement followed by one or more optional clauses such as TYPE OF, WHERE, WITH, GROUP BY and ORDER BY. Specifies a list of one or more fields to retrieve from the specified object separated by commas. Fifth question, what is Apex? Apex is a strongly typed, object-oriented programming language that allows developers to execute flow and transaction control statements on Salesforce servers in conjunction with calls to the API. Apex allows developers to add business logic to most system events such as button clicks, related record updates, and Visual Force pages by using syntax that looks like Java and acts like database stored procedures. Web service requests and object triggers can both initiate Apex code. Sixth question, what is required for deploying Apex code to a production instance? The compilation of all classes and triggers is required. At least 75% of the Apex code must be covered by tests and there cannot be any errors. And finally, all triggers must have coverage of at least 1%. Seventh question, what are the different types of Apex triggers? Triggers are split into two main types, that is, before trigger and after trigger. 
So before triggers, run before a record has been saved into the database, which is optimally used for same record calculations and validations. Whereas after triggers, run after the record that has been saved and should ideally be used for working on records other than the one invoking the trigger. Eighth question, what are the different events for an apex trigger? The different events for an apex trigger are insert, update, delete, and undelete. Ninth question, what is asynchronous apex and what are its different types? Asynchronous apex is used to run processes that are scheduled at a later time. Different types of asynchronous apex are future methods. These are methods that are used in synchronous transactions by annotating them with add future annotation. Second is batch apex. This is used to run large jobs with million records. Third is queuable apex. This is similar to future methods, but with the ability to chain jobs with a class. And fourth is scheduled apex. Apexes that are scheduled to run at a specific time. Tenth question, what is visual force? Visual force is a framework for the force.com platform, which enables developers to build custom interfaces that can be hosted natively on a lightning platform. The highest level container for custom visual force programs is called a page. Create visual force pages by incorporating standard or custom visual force components, static HTML syntax, CSS styling, and JavaScript. We use visual force to create customer user interfaces that completely replace the standard Salesforce styles. Build wizards and other navigation patterns that use data specific rules for optimal, efficient application interaction. Moving on to the 11th question, what are the types of bindings used in Salesforce? One, data bindings. It refers to the data set in the controller. Second is action bindings. It refers to the action methods in the controller. And last is component bindings. It refers to some other visual force components. Twelfth question, what is the lightning component? A user interface framework for creating single page applications for desktop and mobile platforms is called lightning component. Salesforce admins Deploy these components to construct single page web applications that provide end to end experience on the platform for a variety of functions. Next question What is a developer console? An integrated development tool with a number of tools is called the developer console. These are tools that may be used to build, test, and debug applications in salesforce.org. 14th question. What is the difference between Lightning Web Components and Aura Components? Lightning Web Components is built using current web standards to build custom HTML elements. It is used to create reliable and flexible single-page UI-based apps for desktop and mobile. The new model provides performance that is unmatched and coexists with the Aura Components concept. Aura Components are the legacy Lightning Component framework but still utilize JavaScript and HTML for development. Aura gives developers the ability to create apps that are not dependent on Salesforce data. They represent a reusable section of the UI and can range in granularity from a single line of text to an entire app. Next question, what is SLDS? The user interface design framework Salesforce uses for defining, styling, and developing every component of Salesforce Lightning is called the Salesforce Lightning Design System. We use SLDS styles to give your custom Lightning web components a UI that is consistent with Salesforce without having to reverse engineer our styles. Next question, what is an API in Salesforce? Salesforce uses simple, effective, and secure application programming interfaces to provide programmers access to the data in your company known as API. These include Streaming API, SOAP API, Bulk API, and REST API. The Salesforce Data APIs are made up of them all, while other APIs enable you to perform tasks like customizing page layouts or creating unique development tools. Their main function is to allow you to manipulate your Salesforce data. Next question, how to call the Apex method? To call the Apex method in the Lightning Web Component first, we have to create the Apex class and add the Aura enabled method at the first line, that is, before starting the method. To call it from wire service, the method should be cacheable. Hence, add cacheable equals true 
in aura enabled next question how can we use the api in salesforce first soap api it uses soap as a wrapper for api operations second rest api this is ideal when you want to send a message from a client to a server and send back a response third bulk api it is an asynchronous api and has the ability to manage large sets of data finally streaming it is used when the notifications are to be sent from the client to the server based on a defined criterion next question what are the methods of batch apex class start this is used at the start of a batch apex job it is used to gather records or objects and pass them to the interface method to execute it returns the database query locator object or an iterable with the records or objects that were passed on to the job second execute for each batch of records passed to their method this is used this method is used for all data processing this method entails the following steps a database batchable context object reference and a collection of s object records third is finish this is called when all of the batches have been processed this is used to send confirmation emails or to carry out post processing tasks next question what are the ways to call an apex class in salesforce the ways to call an apex class in salesforce are from a developer console next is using triggers from visual force page with javascript links from home page components or from another class next question what is aura enabled the aura enabled annotation enables lightning components to access apex methods and properties the aura enabled annotation is overloaded and is used for two separate and distinct purposes use aura enabled on apex class static methods to make them accessible as remote controller actions in your lightning components the aura enabled annotation enables client side and server side access to an apex controller method next question is it possible to customize apex and visual force directly from the production org apex cannot be modified directly in the production org it may be altered and deployed via a sandbox and is subject to test coverage requirements next question what is sandbox and its types a sandbox is a replica of your business in a different setting that you may utilize for various activities like testing and training a sandbox is a test environment that allows users to run programs or open files without affecting the application system or platform on which they are running sandboxes are used by software developers to test new programming code sandboxes used by cyber security professionals to test potentially malicious software the types of sandbox are developer sandbox developer pro sandbox partial copy sandbox and full sandbox next question what are the decorators used in lwc first at api which is used to expose a variable next is at track which is used to make variables private but reactive the final one is wire which is used to read salesforce data lightning web components next question what is static resource static resources allow you to upload content that you can reference in a visual force page which include archives images style sheets javascript and other files static resources can be used only within your salesforce organization so you can't host content here for other apps or websites a single static resource can be up to 5 mb in size and an organization can have up to 250 mb of static resources in total next question how to convert a 15 digit record id to an 18 digit record and vice versa we can use the case safe id in the formula field to increase its value from 15 to 18 digits to decrease the field size remove the last three digits salesforce automatically truncates the field size from 18 to 15 next question how do you pass data from a child to a parent component the first step is to create a custom component event with the required attributes to facilitate communication between the child and the parent components register an event in the child component using the aura tag and fire an event using a trigger like button on click or on change of input text 
Every time the trigger occurs in the child component, it calls the custom event and passes the required parameters to the parent component. Next question, write a trigger for wherever lead is created with lead source as web, then give rating as cold, otherwise hot. So here, consider object as lead and the type of trigger we use as before insert. Trigger is a predefined keyword and lead scenario is the trigger name for which we are performing on lead object with before insert operation. We are applying for loop on lead object to know whether the lead source equals web. If it is correct, then the rating equals cold or else it equals hot. Next question, write a trigger for whenever new account record is created, then needs to create associated contact record automatically. So we take account as an object and take after insert as a type of trigger. Here, we are creating a trigger in the name of account after with the type after insert. Next, we take a list of contacts. Then we apply for loop on account object to create trigger the contact object. Now, we create a new object for contact. We use the instance of the new object to compare account ID, which is in account and contact object. Similarly, we use the same method for comparing name and phone. We use insert to add the data into contact object. And the final question, what are the ways to deploy metadata in Salesforce? One, change sets. Two, eclipse with force.com ID. Repeat. Third, com migration tool and slash Java based. And fourth, Salesforce package. With that, we've come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Just a quick info guys. IntelliPad provides Salesforce online training mentored by industry experts. The course link is given in the description below. Now, let's continue with the session.